the FAME study has showed us that fractional flow reserve guided PCI, first off, as of this meeting, TCT 2012, it's cost effective, in some cases, maybe money saving, and of course, it improves outcomes. Now, we're moving from FFR, which I've just gotten down pat, to uh, IFR, I'm with Dr. Justin Davies, who is the developer of a product, a project uh, called Instant Wave Free Ratio, and you're with the Imperial College of London. What is IFR? Okay, I just got FFR down. What's IFR? Well, I think if you're familiar with FFR, then yes. making a jump to IFR is very simple. It's essentially a way of measuring the, st the stenosis gradient, so the pressure gradient, like FFR, but without the necessity for giving a, a vasoactive drug like adenosine. So is it easier? Oh, it's much easier. So essentially, uh, very much the same technique. So you pass the wire beyond the stenosis, but that's where the key difference is. Then you push a button on the console, and it makes a measurement in, of five beats, typically two or three seconds, and you have an answer. So the necessity to put an intravenous line in and administer adenosine for two or three minutes goes away, uh, and consequently, you have a, a much more rapid measurement. Now, this has got potential to, to facilitate, obviously, people being more keen to do these assessments, but also to uh, measure in more than one vessel, because you can pass the wire down, make a measurement very rapidly, pull back, and do the same in another vessel. So hopefully, it'll facilitate physiology and, and make it easier for, for doctors. So what was the connection? Did it, were you frustrated by FFR that you decided you could do better, or what triggered in your mind this idea that, let's do F IFR instead? Oh, it's a good question. I mean... Uh, First off, we, we, our institution and myself personally, we're big users of, of FFR. Uh, and I've, uh, over the course of the last 10 years, done a lot of research in pressure and flow physiology. And uh, what we've been working on for some time is actually techniques to, uh, by looking at interactions between the pressure and flow curves, to avoid or negate the use of adenosine uh, in such situations. So essentially what IFR does is, is it mimics the action of, of adenosine by instead of considering the whole pressure curve as a, as a single mean pressure, it looks at, at different phases of the curve whereby, and it looks at a particular phase, uh, the wave-free period where flow is intrinsically highest. And we know that when flow is highest, we get the best discrimination between different stenosis grades. And that of course facilitates us uh, using this technique uh, with a basal resting measurement as opposed to the requirement for giving uh, adenosine. Now you have multi-center uh, trial data from Resolve evaluating yeah. the diagnostic yeah. accuracy of IFR compared to FFR. Tell me about that. So this was a, a, a study which is uh, performed by uh, Alan Jeremias and uh, his team at CRF under the guidance of Gary Mintz and, and Greg Stone. Uh, participating centers were D diverse, so uh, from all the big fame investigators uh, to our centres, uh, Dr. Ku's centre for South Korea, uh, Dr. Jeremiah's centre, uh, and uh, from uh, various other smaller sites as well uh, throughout the world. All in all, there are about 1,500 uh, lesions were assessed, and we found uh, almost identical results uh, to what we reported at uh, EuroPCR earlier this year in the advised registry study, and to data that Dr. Ku presented at the same meeting as well. Um, the, the big take home message here is what we're initially going to propose before we have outcome data is that this technique is used conservatively and by that I mean that we have three buckets. We have a, a top end bucket and we say that if the IFR value is, is at a certain level it's safe to defer the lesion. We have a bottom bucket where we said if it's at a certain level then PCI would be recommended and in the middle in the so-called grey zone here that's where we'd recommend currently to, to give adenosine and do, make a normal FFR measurement. And we know by taking this strategy, we can get an almost 60% reduction in adenosine use whilst maintaining an overall accuracy of about 95%. Wow, that's pretty impressive. So uh, the knock-on effect here for physicians is in obviously the vast majority of cases they'd get away without requiring requiring adenosine uh, and hopefully that would lead to obviously cost reductions there, uh, both in terms of the actual adenosine, also reductions in uh, time, and also for the patients who you know, often don't like the, these drugs being administered, obviously that would be a more pleasant experience for them. So kind of like the FAME results, better outcomes, you end up with uh, perhaps money saving, at least cost reductions, and certainly cost effective. So we'd always be conservative and saying that currently at the moment we could, we can, we, it's easy to calculate the cost savings we would get simply by reduction in drug use time right. uh, and, and, and intravenous sheaths we may want to put in. Uh, in terms of outcome, we need to obviously perform the studies to be certain about that before we can make any claims in that area at all.
So IFR is going to be available or widely available soon? So uh, at the moment we're at the final stage of actually kind of testing the console and I, I gather that the first cases should be done within the next you know, six to eight weeks. Um, having said that, uh, moving forward in terms of looking at future trials, um, there will be a series of uh, five uh, different trials uh, under the Define heading starting uh, next year and uh, these will explore uh, outcome data, so looking for events in patients uh, by deferring at this particular level, uh, exploring the relationship in acute coronary syndrome, primary PCI, uh, the effects on in relation to coronary flow, uh, and there will also be another study, the Advice 2 study, similar to what we performed before, but a prospective study looking at uh, IFR in comparison to FFR. And you can read more about Justin, Dr. Justin Davies' work in CardioSource at Eventual News. I'm Rick McGuire, the executive editor of CSIN.